Hi, thanks for coming to my channel and I'm super excited to show you this book that I've made, this mini album, uh, using the authentic paper called Party. I've made a couple other things already. Um, I made a birthday box and the birthday box is actually what I'm going to be putting this mini album in. So if you want to take a check, uh, uh, take a look at that tutorial, it's on my uh, page. So I thought I'd do a walkthrough of this album and then I will show you at the end of uh, this video how to do the base pages. Um, they're all the same. There are six pages in the book and um, I also show you how to do the cover if you're not familiar with that. So let's get started. Let me give you some measurements. This book is five and a half. The spine is about uh, four and it is about four and three fourths inches high tall. Um, on the front cover I use the stickers and backed them on um, black cardstock and I have these little silver beads that I put in between them to uh, make the pennant flag at the top. Popped up the sticker party uh, on pop dots after I put it on black paper. Just tucked a little black flower uh, underneath that. This is a sticker that I put on black paper. Uh, I have a punch for the bow and then I added this sparkly trim at the bottom just because I felt like before I didn't have anything down there and I felt like it needed something and being as it's a party it needs sparkle. Um, on the spine I just used paper from the collection cut out uh, no the surprise was a sticker backed it on black put the two uh, flowers on the corners and then on the back all I did was um, put the saying from the paper collection on the bottom and it says, let us know the happiness time brings, not count the years. I thought that was cool. So let's take a look at the inside. I just used seam binding. I really didn't need a closure. There's enough space in between um, in the gussets that it stays closed nicely and doesn't need um, a, bind a closing, but I did. Um, I started with a pocket and I just put out, cut out two papers and mounted them on black and put those in here. The back will have the same type of pocket. Um, like I said, there are six pages. The pages measure about four and a fourth tall and about five, uh, and about five uh, wide. So each of these, like I said, is the same. Uh, underneath the cut apart, I have a little tag that folds and um, it's actually a die that I have and this just opens and you can write in it, but it has the little slit cut out uh, already and I just tucked one of those behind each of the cut aparts. Each cut apart um, does lift up and I have a place for a picture and I have um, like a cream colored paper on all of these. I did punch out or I use my die to cut out smile. I thought you would explain the picture and write underneath that. And then my favorite part is that all of them have a feature where you pull the top and out comes, to me it looks like a three-tiered birthday cake. And I stamped on all of them. This one is just happy birthday. Uh, this is the spectrum paper and then I used my Martha Stewart punch to get that icing border. And then I didn't know if you could write on here or add something small. Um, but to me, you would do most of the writing and pictures there. So like I said, all of them have that feature. Um, when you turn the page then, uh, you have a place for a picture. This corner piece was a die that I had. I left it open so you can tuck something in. Like so. And then uh, when you open it, I just wanted room for pictures. So I have a sticker down here that says celebrate. These all come out and then are matted on the back also. So all of them are the same. I just used different stamps uh, and I alternated the colors pink and blue and then some are blue with pink. And they all flip up. They all have the tag. So next one. Again, they flip up. I just think it looks cool when they're all open too. Now the box I'm putting it in, it's not big enough to have those staying up. So obviously I'd have to put them back down. OK. 
okay and the back page again has a pocket just cut out some paper and mounted it on black and stuck those in there okay so that's what the book let me open this first one too this is what the book looks like if you keep them open from the side so I think it turned out really cute I mean I have to admit I'm not trying to be conceited but I do like it um, so let me move into the uh, tutorial and that is going to show you how to make those pages and construct the cover so let's get started on the tutorial I'm going to start with the base pages first um, I have sticky notes on the paper so if you want to get a notebook to copy this down so you can refer to it later that would be great um, I do not put the measurements in the description box just because of the amount of time that's involved and I um, put it on the papers during the video so you can see what I'm talking about so here we go uh, base pages first so I'm going to start with a paper that is four and three-fourths by nine four and three-fourths by nine and I'm going to make uh, two score marks I'm going to make a score mark at one half let me fix that when I get closer to the camera it's harder to see so let's see okay the score marks are one half and four and three fourths okay now that's for um, you're gonna need six of these because this is a six page album so I've already cut my papers to size so now I just need to score so I'm gonna score this at half and four and three fourths I'm going to go ahead and fold on my score lines and I'm going to adjust as needed if it doesn't line up just right and okay I am going to miter the corners okay I'll put some glue on that one half inch strip and when I seal it that becomes your bake uh, base page This is the art glitter glue. I've talked about it in pretty much all of my videos about how awesome it is. Okay, I made sure it lined up at the edge and so now I'm going to have to do some adjusting when I score so that this lays down flat because it didn't line up exactly the way I wanted. And now it does so the good thing about paper is you can always adjust as needed okay so that's your base page this is the side that will attach to the um, binding okay so I'm just going to set that to the side um, the next one we're going to do will be um, you're going to need six of these four and one eighth by nine and we're going to score at four and a half and this is going to be the card that goes into the side so you might want to write that down four and one eighth by nine score at four and a half go ahead and make sure everything lines up and press down real good Okay, so when I say this is the part, if this is going to be my front, this actually goes into the side here. And then when you turn the page, it opens and you can take it out. Okay. All right. So um, let's go ahead and do this one next. 
This will be the flap that's on the front page. So this is 3 and 7 eighths by 4 and 3 fourths. And on the 4 and 3 fourths side, we're going to um, score it 1 half. So 4 and 3 fourths side, score at 1 half. I'm going to go ahead and use my bone folder and I'm going to miter, cutting at an angle down to the score line. So it takes off little right triangles. Okay, so it looks like that. Okay, so let's talk about the other pieces you're going to need. You're going to need six that are three by three. You are going to need six that are three and one eighth by ten and a fourth, and I'll explain the scoring in a minute. You're going to need six that are four and one fourth by eleven and five eighths, and again I'll explain the scoring in a minute. And then we just need two, um, need some little strips here. And so those measure uh, six of them at one half by two and a half and six that are one half by three. Okay, so now you should have all of the pieces cut that you're going to need. And so now let's start with our scoring. So I'm going to take the four and one eight, or excuse me, four and a fourth by eleven and five eighths piece. And we are going to score it at three and seven eighths. And what I'm going to do, instead of doing another score mark, I'm going to go ahead and fold on that score line. And I'm just going to fold in this other side, the long side, into that score, making sure it's lined up. I'll crease it and then I will go ahead and use my bone folder. Let's make sure that folds up. Perfect. Okay, so you have it's in thirds, equal equal amounts. We're going to do the same thing for this one, this three and one eighth by ten and a fourth. We're going to score at three and three eighths for this one. Oopsie, I'll take that off. This one was three and three eighths. And just like we did the other one, let's go ahead and burnish this one. And then let's fold into that, fold the long piece into the center, or not the center, the first third where the score line is. Press down and burnish. So you should have Okay, equal pieces. So now we're going to do some cutting and I'm just going to use my little Fiskars one here. So let's start with the um, larger piece. And on the larger piece, let me get my cheat sheet. Okay, we're going to work on the panel on the far right and we're going to make two slits uh, in this paper going uh, vertically and we're going to start at one half and go down to two and three fourths. Now when I do that I'm going to line up this score mark on the one inch of my cutter. So the this score is going to be on the one inch mark. Okay. Now I'm going to place my blade at one half inch and go down to two and three fourths. So this is black paper, so I, it's kind of hard to see. So that's, whoops, I just moved it. So one half and I'm going to go down to two and three fourths. Okay. So you should have a slit and now I'm going to place this side at the one inch on my right 
and I'm going to make the same cut. So I'm going to start at one half and go down to two and three fourths. Like so. Let's put that one aside and do the next, the smaller size. Again, we're going to work with the piece on the right. We're going to take that score mark and place it at the one inch mark on our trimmer. This time we're going to start at one fourth and go down to two and one fourth. So I'm going to place my blade at one fourth. And go down to two and one fourth. Man, this is hard for my eyeballs when it's black. Okay. So we have one slit and now this side we're going to place at the one inch on the right hand side and go to the one fourth down to two and one fourth. Okay, so you should have two equal slits. So what we're going to do next is I want you to take the two and uh, the three inch one half by three inch piece, and this is for the larger one that we just cut. This is the big one. This is the three inch by uh, one half. I'm going to fold my right hand side in so that I'm looking at it so it looks like halves instead, and I'm going to place this underneath so that I have two pieces sticking out on the sides. Okay, and all I'm going to do now is fold those into the center, or fold that into the, yeah, to the center. And I don't want to make it too tight because this is going to make the pieces slide up and down. And so that should be able to move up and down fairly easily. Okay, let's do the same thing with the medium sized. So I'm going to fold that right hand piece in. I'm going to take the one half by two and a half inch piece, stick it underneath so that the two little pieces stick out the side. And I'm going to fold those towards the center. Now some people like to make it long enough that these two pieces can connect and they glue them. But sometimes I think that kind of uh, gets in the way of the um, moving the sliding up and down so that's why I don't connect them and they're going to be protected and there'll be something over it so that they don't come undone but if you feel more comfortable making a longer strip and then gluing them together that would be totally fine and so let's just make sure this slides fine and it does okay so I'm going to now take some 1 4th inch score tape and on the very right hand side I'm going to place a strip on the edge. I'm going to turn it sideways just so it's easier for me to put it on there. Just right on that very edge. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing for my large one on the very right, uh, excuse me, left hand side. I think I said that wrong. Left hand side. I'm going to turn it and I'm going to place my score tape just right along the edge. Okay, um, the strip that's in the slits, I'm going to place a piece of score tape on that also. Make sure it doesn't go over so that it gets in the way of it moving. I might have a little bit of over there. Okay, so I can still move it up and down. And I need to go back and put score tape on this one also. So, get one of your 3x3 three three pieces, remember you made 6 of those, and what we're going to do is we're going to attach this to that slider. And so I want it to uh, be up a little bit so that people can see that they pull that up. So I lifted it up about a fourth of an inch, and I'm also centering it on this page. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and remove my backing. I'm going to place this a little bit above 
and center and press down. I'm going to fold the right side in. Now when I place this, when I take this off and bring it over here, I want to make sure that these two are folded in and that will keep it from coming undone. And burnish real well. And so what we have is the first one that pops up. Okay, that's the first one. So let's go to the larger one. We're going to now place it. Now I can see my seam. Um, I thought I could. Man, I did a good job on this one. Um, the seam where I just laid it down. I don't want to see that. I want it to be nice and smooth, so I don't want to see where I taped it down. So the good side faces up. This time I want to line this up. I'm going to center it again, but this time I don't, the only thing I want to show a little bit above is this three by three piece that we attached. I don't want any of this one to show above the line. Okay, so just this little piece, and then I'm going to take off the backing. I'm going to center it and make sure that I can just see that top one and press down. Fold that in. Make sure your two tabs are facing the inside. Remove the backing. Press down. And there is our three tiers. Okay. So that is going to eventually here be attached to our base page. So let's let's go ahead and do that. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to center it on my base page and I put sticky um, score taper on the outside and I just use glue on the inside. So let's go ahead and prep that. And again this is going to go in the birthday box that I made with the same paper line, Party by Authentique. your tapes on real real well and then now I'm going to go ahead and place my glue on the inside I'll tell you what I need to use my pin again okay Alright, so let's go ahead and remove the backing of our score tape. Make sure you don't have anything hanging over. Okay, and let's go ahead and center this. Oh, I lied. Oh, don't do that. Please don't do that yet. Hold up, hold up, hold up. If you do, oh, watch this first, people. I need to put, I think it's easier to put your base paper on first and to save paper, I just am going to put two pieces at the end. And so um, I already cut these and put the uh, ink around the edge. Oh, I'm glad I caught that. Um, these are, if this is four and a fourth, this is four and an eighth tall, and I just did like an inch and a half to save on paper. So let me put these down first. Now you can put a piece to cover the whole thing, but I didn't think that was necessary. And 
and now one on the other side. Again, they're four and an eighth tall, one and a half inch wide. Because you're only going to see the outside. Like so. All right, let me refresh my glue on here. Okay, now let's lay that down and center it. And press down real well. Okay, let's make sure everything's working fine. Yes, we do have our three tiers. And I leave it so that top one shows a little bit to know you tug on it. Let's take our flap that we made that we burnished, uh, or not burnished, that we uh, mitered the edges. And we're going to attach that to the very front, making sure it lines up nice and neat. So I'm going to go ahead and put some adhesive on there. I usually use black cardstock. I mean, I use black cardstock a lot because I like the look of it. But I have to say, it is kind of hard on the old eyeballs. It's easier to see when you're working with the linen color or the cr cream colored or white paper. Uh, where's my burnishing? Right here. Just going to make sure that that's down real good. Okay. See how fast this comes together? Cleaning up my workspace real quick. Okay, so now it's just a matter of decorating. Like I said, this will go into this side. This goes into the side pocket. We'll get to that. So let's take that one, the one that we just folded in half. Okay, and I just cut out. I have cream color for the inside, so that if you want to write or add pictures, you can do that. And so let me measure these for you if you're doing it the same size I am. Uh, this is four and three eighths wide by four inches. Four and three eighths by four. And I'm just going to attach that on the left and then one on the right. So because I already had them cut, I'll go ahead and do that real quick. And you don't want it to get in the way of the score in the center. So I make sure it goes pretty close to the left hand side here. Okay, and now let's do the right hand side. Four inches tall, four and three eighths inches wide. Don't want it to get in the way of the score, so be careful. Okay. Now remember, when you put this in the book, when you turn it over, the, you're going to see, if, you, if I am looking at, it's gonna, I want the most decorative paper on the right hand side. So I want this to be on the right hand side, so that when I turn it, that's what I see. Um, this probably measures the same thing, four inches by four, by four and three eighths. Yep, same thing. And I'm going to put this one on the right, and I'm going to put the more subtle one on the left. Make sure it doesn't go over that score line. Have an equal border all the way around. Okay. 
burnish. Make sure the corners are down real good. And then the other one is going to go on the left hand side. And like I said, I already put black. I uh, used Tim Holtz black soot around the edges because I'm using black paper and I want to hide that white core on the paper. Have an equal border on all three sides. Don't cross the score line. And burnish. Okay, now to give this one some pizzazz, I did, I have a die that I used. Um, this is two pieces. I cut out the blue and went around it in black, and then I had this scrolly thing that goes on the inside. I don't know what brand it is, but uh, I'm just going to place that here on the corner. And then even if you put a picture in, it'll still be able to tuck in, but it'll add some, you know, not so it's not so boring. So I'm only going to put glue on two sides so that I can tuck something underneath. I'm going to place that in the corner here. Okay. And that's it for that one. I left this pretty open and simple. I mean, you could stamp in here if you wanted. Um, you could add some decorations, but I'm going to leave this pretty much the way it is just for pictures so that I can fit as many pictures in as I can. So that one's pretty much done. So let's go back to our base page and start adding our decorative paper. So I'm going to open the flap and I'm going to put a piece of cream colored paper so that if you want to do writing and being as I plan on having a picture here, I went ahead and cut out the word smile and I'm just going to glue that to the top and then I can write underneath about what the picture is or how it explains maybe who gave you that gift or um, whatever, how you felt about the gift. <laughs> Hopefully good. So I'm just going to glue that on the top here. On that cream color. That really stands out. And for measurements, this is three and three-fourths wide and four and one eighth long. And put the glue on there. Make sure you don't cross the score line down at the bottom. And I'm going to close it and burnish. So there's smile and then this is going to go underneath and that's probably where I'll place a picture. This measures the same three and three fourths by four and one eighth. I already used black around the edges. This paper is so cute. Go ahead and burnish. Okay, I'm going to turn my card over just because I have the next piece ready. This is for the back, and this bad boy measures a four and five eighths by four and an eighth. Four and five eighths by four and one eighth. It's hard for me to use the paper that's got the cut apart because I always want to use those, but. I had plenty, so it worked out. Because I always think their cut aparts are so cute. Often Tink does a great job with those. And I think they do a good job with having some for older and some for younger. So, okay. Just center that. Make sure it has this equal border around the sides. And burnish. Okay, um, 
for this, I took a piece of the paper and then I used one of the cut aparts. I mounted the cut apart on black paper. Um, the base, the base paper is four and one eighth by three and three fourths. And so then I just cut my cut apart and black paper accordingly so that it fit nice and neat. And I'm going to attach that here. Now I will tell you when I attached my black, I put the cut apart on the black paper and I only glued it on three sides so that I could stick something in the side. So that's open on the right, okay? So let's go ahead and place this on our base page. Centering it. press down. If you have any glue that comes out, use your dry wet wipe. So we want to make sure those corners are down. Oh. thought my video stopped. I was freaking out. Okay. Alright. So now... Um, I happen to have a die that's from, I don't know, Stampin' Up! or somebody, and it cuts out a tag that has a perforation and then folds over. So I just cut out, I did three in black and three in this cream color, put a sticker on from the collection, put a bow, and that's just going to tuck right in like so. Okay, so let's expand the tiers, and now for the middle one I cut out a piece of the um, spectrum paper and then I used my border punch I think it's a Martha Stewart it's this one and so I thought that made it look cakeish and this measures a three and three-eighths three and three-eighths by two and I'm going to put that on the second one and it will go down a little bit underneath there and that's totally what we want. Okay. And push down real good. Super. And then on the top one, oopsie, uh, for the top one, I cut out a piece of, I used both the spectrum paper, this one's the pink, um, on some of them I use blue, and then I cut out a piece of the cream color paper I have. I had stamps, I, I had six different stamps, no, that's a lie, I had three different stamps that related to birthday, so I did two of each of the sayings. Two of them say happy birthday, but they're in different font. And then this one says, the more candles, the bigger the wish. And then I just put a sticker on from the collection. So the pink paper is two and seven eighths by one and seven eighth. And then the white piece or the cream color on the inside would be two and three fourths by one and three fourths. And we're going to attach that like so. And this puppy is just about done, except for you have to do it five more times. I have already done it those times. <laughs> Goes underneath just a hair to tuck in. Ooh, there we go. Okay. So that's what we have. And the only other thing that I did that I still need to do is, um, oh, I was like, what? Um, on this page, I put a stopper so that if, 
I can put a picture and it tucks underneath and I just mounted this on black paper. So I'm only going to put glue at the bottom so that something can tuck behind it. And you don't have to do this part obviously. Because it might get in the way of your picture, you never know. Okay, and then I'm just going to slide this in. I can't see with that black paper. So there's the back. And then that comes out. So that really does come together pretty quick. And I have to say I love it. Okay, so then now the only thing, um, like I said, I had six pages. So here are my six. You'll notice I used a cut apart on all of them on that front page. Alright, so now it's just a matter of making the cover and doing something on the front inside cover. I probably just do like a real simple pocket and then the back. I'll probably do a simple pocket. Um, okay, so now it's time to get ready for the cover. It's probably smart to do our spine before we actually do the, um, bind the binding uh, because um, or it's better to do the binding before the spine because we want to know that we get the right width of our book. So you're going to need a piece of paper that is 4 and 1 8 by 12. Let me write that. 4 and 1 8 by 12. Okay. And I like to score in 1 half increments, but I'm going to start at 1 and a half. So at the 1 and a half, make a score and then go every half inch. So two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, all the way down till you get to 10. 10, is, 10 inches is your last score mark, okay? Start at one and a half, go every half inch. So two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, continue on down to the 10 inch and then stop, okay? So that will give you six uh, of the pieces to attach the base pages to and five spaces. So let's go ahead and start folding on those. So I, uh, you want a mountain. Let me, this is actually the second score line that I am burnishing. Okay, and then I'm going to go back and move it forward on that score line and back on the score line. So you have this, okay? And then the next score, uh, the next one is a space, a half inch space. So then you're going to um, skip that score line and go to the second one after our mountain and crease that. Burnish it. And then I hold on to that at the top and then fold it forward on the score, fold it backward on the score. So now you have two. The next one's a space. So go uh, skip the next score line and go to the second one and fold it. That's going to make our third mountain. Burnish. Then I hold that mountain top, fold it forward on the score line that's in front of it, score it back on the score line that was in front of it, or behind it. So now we have three and two spaces. So skip the next score line, fold on the second one, burnish it. Fold it at the top, fold it forward and backward. So now we have four. Skip the next score line, go to the next one, fold it. That'll be our fifth mountain. And I hold it mountain and I'm going to Bend it forward and backward on the score lines in front of it and behind it. Now we have five and then 
skip that first score line, go to the second one. Grab it at the top, forward, and backward. So this is your hinge. Okay, and so now I'm going to place tape on for the inside to keep the hinge together and then one on the space. So one on the inside of the uh, mountain and one on the space. One on the inside of the mountain, one on the space so that it's going to be easier to attach to our book. Um, so we'll have all the adhesive on there. So let's do that. I finished up my hinge by making sure um, I took the tape apart or took the backing off on the mountains, put them together to make hinges. Um, left the tape on the spaces and I added tape on each end so that this will lay down nice and stay adhered to my um, binding, not my binding, my spine. And then I went ahead and put score tape on each side of the hinges and you put them as close to the top as possible. It's better to have it closer to the top than at the bottom. Okay, and so after measuring this, I decided to go with a spine that was three and three fourths and by four and five eighths. So it's gonna be three and three fourths uh, across by four and five eighths tall. My other two pieces of chipboard for my cover, five and a half by four and five eighths. Okay, so the four and five eighths is how tall the book is going to be. It's going to be five and a half wide. Okay, so there's the chipboard you need. Um, I'm going to be wrapping my book in the black paper. So I wanted it six and five eighths inches tall. And I want it to be about 17 inches long. So I'm going to um, take another piece and just attach it right at the end, about a, eighth, about a fourth of an inch, eighth of an inch to a fourth of an inch overlap using my art glitter glue to make it 17 inches long. You can have it longer, but I wouldn't have it any shorter than 17 inches. Okay. So let me uh, combine these two pieces of paper and I'm just going to put a real thin, um, line of glue and it should still stay. Every time I take this pin out I have to remember to clean it, clear it out. Okay. Alright. I am going to use the lines on my board here. Make sure I keep everything straight. That is not straight. I'm just going to place this right on top. Sure those are together real well. Okay, so now we're going to be placing uh, score tape on the back of these. I haven't done that yet, um, so I'll go ahead and do that off camera. Uh, score tape on the back so that we can lay them out like so. Uh, and we're also going to be using score tape. So that's next is to have your chipboard, your black uh, cover paper, and your tape on the back of your chipboard. All right, I'm all ready to go. So I have all my tape uh, on the back. Uh, I'm going to use my ruler here and make a one inch border or line my ruler up so that I have a one inch border at the bottom. So I can lay this down nice and neat. Remember it's the five and a, uh, five and a half that goes across. So I'm going to place it at about three-fourths of an inch from the edge and glue it down. Tape it down. Okay, take off the backing. These sheets of score tape are lifesavers. 
I don't know why I spent so much time before using all the individual sheets when you can buy them in the larger sheets. Okay, so let me make sure everything is lined up. About three fourths of an inch. In between my chipboard, I'm going to place a one half, or excuse me, one fourth inch piece of score tape. I'm going to turn it sideways; it's easier for me uh, to keep as a spacer. I line it up right up against the chipboard. I'm going to go ahead and put my ruler back down to help me keep equal spacing. Okay, next is the spine. So I'm just going to butt that up right against that score tape. Make sure I'm lined up at the bottom up against my ruler. Press down. Place another piece of score tape up against this piece. border and put my last piece on this one I got one sheet oh so nice Okay, so now we're going to prep the edges by placing score tape along the perimeter of our chipboard, score tape around the edge of our black wrapping paper. Let me put the pin in my glue so it doesn't dry up. Okay, so I'm going to use the one fourth again on uh, the chipboard, and I'm just going to put it all the way to the end. Turn it, do the other side. And we're going to do the two short ends also. Like so. Now I'm, I'm going to use the three fourths, nope, three eighths of an inch score tape on the black paper because I have a, uh, at least an inch here, so to me it's just a little bit better coverage. I don't have to put it all the way to the end because we're going to miter our corners. Flip it, do the other side. And the two short ends also. Alrighty. So now I'm going to bend the paper by lifting up 
and pushing down where, so it right at the edge where it meets that chipboard so it knows where to fold. I'm going to do that on all four sides. my mitering tool to uh, miter the corners. So you, it's a metal one. You just place it on the corner and then it gives you just the right amount of edge to keep to wrap it without the chipboard showing. all four. Last one. Clean up my mess. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a bead of glue along my chipboard so that it wraps around there real nice. I'm going to take off the backing. almost forgot I gotta take off these middle pieces almost forgot so if I don't do it now I will not remember later these up a little bit. Alright, so I'm going to push from the center out once I have it over my chipboard, smoothing it as I go. Take my bone folder and make sure that it's laying down real good, real well. I'm going to turn it and just kind of give it a soft burnish on the edges. Turn it and do the opposite side the same way. and put that line of glue you know when I first started making these the cover was the hardest part for me or maybe the most tense I guess and now it's a piece of cake I actually kind of like it it's nice to see it all come together all right again I'm gonna start in the center pushing and smoothing it out as I go. Take my burnishing tool, make sure it's down. I'm do it on the edges. It's fabulous. Now just the two short ends. Now when I do this one, I do have to tuck in those corners that are a little bit extra. Here on the end, I'm going to push those in so it covers the chipboard. Last 
one. Tuck in those corners if you did your uh, mitering like I did. Not mitering. Yeah, mitering. And burnish. All right, so now we want to make sure that everything is down real well. If you're not using the artisan cardstock from Country Craft Creations, just be gentle. The uh, paper that I'm using is pretty durable and tough because of the linen that's in it. We want to make sure that these go in the spaces between our spine and our cover. Alright, now you can put decorative paper down to cover this. You can use um, black paper. I am going to go with, I think I'll go black and then I will add decorative paper after that. So let me get my paper. Um, let's measure to see how wide we have to cut it. I like it to go pretty much from end to end here. So let's go four and three fourths. And that's too big, so let's go four. Okay, that's much better. Four and five eighths. Let me get another piece ready. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm going to put score tape around the edges and glue in the center. I'm using the 3 8 inch right now. But you could use half. Or I mean a fourth. I always do that. Oops. burnish here before you take the backing off and then if you have any uh, loose tape ends push them over the edge so that they don't show in your book like this one I'm gonna have to I can see some glue tape hanging over so that goes over okay and I'm gonna use glue to fill in Line it up. And remember, you want to get it down in the crease where the front cover meets the spine and the back cover meets the spine. I 
heat bubbles, so we want to make sure we don't have any of those. Okay, and then I do need to add one more little piece down here. Same thing, I'm going to go ahead and place score tape around the edge. Ugh. Almost done. If you are new to making albums, this is probably helpful. If you have been making albums for a long time, this is probably not very useful, but I thought I'd include it just in case. A lot of people know how to do the covers. However, I don't do the binding on all of my videos just because there's so many out there. You can always find a video, and I know Tammy has one. Uh, Tammy Merrill on her page, she shows how to do the binding. So if ever I don't show it, visit Tammy's page and she's got one on there. All right, just want to make, oh, am I out of camera? Make sure it's lined up. Hard to see with that black. And this will be covered by paper, so that's okay that there's a seam there. Now, as I'm tucking this in, I'm going to start lifting up my cover at a 90 degree angle. Okay. And same way with this one, as I'm tucking it in, making sure that the paper's adhering. I'm going to bring this one up to a 90 degree angle. No bubbles is what the goal is. If we put enough on there, glue that is, or adhesive. Okay, we're going to have a chunky book. There we go. Now you have to decide if you want a ribbon closure, uh, if you want some sort of latching system or a bow. I usually go with some sort of seam binding. I just think that it's the nicest. And being signed, mine's in a box, I don't want anything too thick and too bulky. So I would place the seam binding, glue that down, and then put my decorative paper on top. Uh, before I do that, let's go ahead and put our... You know, I think I'm going to... Here's what I'm going to do with this. Uh, maybe not. I might want to wrap this around so it doesn't go over. It's going to get too bulky in that crevice. Let me do that real quick. I did a couple of things before I decided to put the spine, the binding in. Uh, I went ahead and um, backed or put decorative paper on the inside. I did three separate sheets, one for each cover and one for the center. Um, went ahead and put a pocket on the front and the back. Uh, the pockets are two inches, so that means I cut it two and a half uh, by about five and a fourth. So I cut that six and a fourth and then scored it on half inch on three sides to make the pocket. I went ahead and did the outside also. I put my paper on, I did pink, uh, and then I went ahead and put some of the decorative paper because I love those cakes and stuff. And then I did the uh, spine, just put the word surprise. Uh, it was a sticker and I backed it on black paper. 
And then on the front, <clears throat> I have a three-dimensional bow that I put underneath a sticker that I backed on black, and then I popped up party. And that's all I'm going to do for the front. Um, so now I'm ready to put in my um, hinges. And I did wrap around, instead of keeping the wings out on the side, I did leave a half inch on each side and fold it under, uh, and then retaped it so that there's not too much thickness in the fold. So now I just need to center this and place that down and then put the pages on. So let me go ahead and take the backing off of this score tape. And then if there's any tape hanging over the edge, make sure you tuck it. So I want to center it and make sure there's the same amount of distance from the top and the bottom. And get it as straight as possible. I need to move it closer. Okay, and then make sure you go through the gussets and push down real well so that it sticks to the um, spine real well. Okay, so now it's just a matter of putting the pages on. So when you put your pages on, take out that center card that we had in there. Um, take that out. And then you're just going to make sure that it slides onto your hinges. If not, you're going to want to angle the hinges. Get it on there. Okay. I might have to angle one of these. What is getting stuck? Okay, hold on. I'm going to get this. Alright, I must have some glue that's stuck. So I need to put my bone folder. Is getting stuck. Let me work at that page later. I got something stuck in there. I'll try this one, see if that does the same thing. And then you're going to want to bend it over so it lays flat. And then you go and you peel off. You're going to peel off a little bit on the left and a little bit on the right of the score tape. And then you're going to pull it off the rest and make sure that it's stuck on real good. Because this is not the page I want on here. I'm going to try this one more time. I just don't know what's getting... Oh, I think I felt it. Oh my gosh, what is it? I mitered my corners when I glued that shut. I wonder if that's what it's getting stuck on. There, Maybe I say that too soon. I just, okay, I'm angling these. 
at least this one, that I can't get it on right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my scissors, which I just had, and I'm just going to angle... Oh, that went flying. Okay. So how, can you see how I angled this one on the end? Because I couldn't get it on. And I'm not going to sit here and fight all day. And that should do the trick. Yes, that did the trick. Okay. So here's how I'm going to do the. I'm just going to do one page and then I think you can figure it out. So I'm going to move a little, remove a little bit of the backing on each side. And remember, you don't want to slide your page all the way down to the base. You want to give it a little bit of room. So see, I have the two pieces hanging out so they'll be easy to pull. So I'm laying that flat and I'm going to gently pull the rest of this backing and press down. And then I'm going to turn the page and pull this one. And then just make sure it's on there real well. And then let's see what it looks like with the card in there. The hinges are in the way. All right, and you're gonna do that to all six. So I just need to wrap up putting in my pages and then this bad boy is done and I will show you uh, what it looks like once I have all the pages in. Okay, this is the final um, book uh, now that it's done. I have all my pages in. Um, I put two cut aparts in the front and the back. And then each of the pages, remember, flips up has the tag that comes out the side, has the cake that comes out the top, turn the page, it's got the flap, it opens and comes out. And each page is just like that. So I hope you found this tutorial to be pretty easy to follow. If you have questions, let me know. Again, this was a design team project for Country Craft Creations, and the paper line is called Party by Authentique. Um, go ahead and visit countrycraftcreations.com. Thanks. I'll be coming back with another tutorial soon.